Hello everybody and welcome to this online training video. Okay, this is going to be the first part in a series where we look at different things that we would like you to be doing in the classroom. Okay, and the first one we're going to look at today is how to give feedback. Okay, so of course feedback is crucial to all of your lessons, whether you're doing SLE or PIP, because without feedback we have that feeling that we're never really improving in anything. Okay, imagine anything you've learned in your life, whether that's been a language or driving or how to cook, without any kind of feedback you never knew how well you were doing. Okay, so that is one reason, but let's look at some other reasons why feedback is so important. Okay, so we said first of all, if you're learning something but there's no indication that you're actually getting anywhere, this is as simple as making a recipe that you never get to taste or trying to get in a car and you've never actually had a lesson before and then taking your test, down to language classes. We know that language classes take a very long time. We know that learning a language is an ongoing process and if you're not getting any kind of feedback, then you're not getting any kind of motivation to continue. Now here at Pagoda, your students have made a very important decision. They decided first of all to come and take a language class, which is difficult in itself, and number two, they decided to have a native teacher. Okay, which again is even more difficult for them. So for you, you need to make sure that support, encouragement, praise and motivation are things that are coming from you all the time. Okay, but let's take a look then at what kind of feedback we should be using in the classroom. Okay, so different types of feedback. Number one, praise. Okay, now uh, I would love to speak German. I wish I spoke German. I studied German, but unfortunately I had a terrible teacher. Herr Weilmann, or Frau Weilmann, I should say, but she seemed like a man. Uh, anyway, she never did. She followed the book from page to page, cover to cover. I didn't do very well in the exams, and therefore, ich nach kann Deutsche sprechen. Okay, because she never gave praise. She never made us feel good. And I'm sure everybody has had this experience. There's a reason some of us are no good at math. There's a reason some of us have no interest in geography. And a lot of that had to do with the teacher. Were they motivating? Did they create a positive atmosphere? And this is true in your classroom. What is the atmosphere like? You know, there is a huge difference between level of 1A and 3C, and yet a lot of teachers will tell us that 1A students are more participatory, they're more more active than 3C students and that is down to how motivating the atmosphere is. Now correction uh, can be a contentious point. Sometimes we do too much correction and sometimes we don't do enough. But in every language class we know that we have target language and we are trying to help and motivate the students with any kind of correction that we do. And of course it must always be constructive and honest. Okay, the third thing then would be advice and encouragement. It's not enough that students come to the class. We know this. 50 minutes, five days a week is not enough to learn a language. Students have to be doing something to help themselves. That can be just reading or joining a study group or just tips and things that you as the teacher can tell them that you know will help them improve in the long run. And finally then, evaluation and assessment. These are all courses that the students are taking. Whether they come for 20 days or 40 days or 60 days, they need to know how is my success measured. Now, uh, a lot of our students we know rely on test scores, but that's something here at Pagoda we try to move away from. We're trying to make our students more discerning. How can I actually feel improvement in my lessons? Okay, because the worst thing you can do as a teacher is simply to have no feedback whatsoever. So let's take a look at some examples. It's been a really good month, Jason. It's been such a pleasure having you here in the class. Thank you, teacher. I'm exciting. Yes, you are, Jason, but I think you're more excited. Hmm? You're doing a really good job, Jason, but I think to help you with your vocabulary, you should read more in English. So, mm. this is for you. Thank you, teacher. Okay, Jason, so here are all the things you've done really well this mm. month, so fantastic next level, but I really want you to concentrate on these things. This will really help you improve, okay? Thank you, teacher. Okay, so the biggest problem that you can have in a language classroom is to receive absolutely no feedback whatsoever. Okay, like I said before. So remember that kid who didn't take any driving lessons? Let's take a look at what happened to him. There is no... Okay, uh, he was fine by the way, but the point is without feedback we all eventually hit a wall and often in language that's what happens to us at intermediate. We feel like we're not improving anymore. But it's not enough just to know that you need to give feedback, you also have to think about the type of feedback that you're giving. So let's take a look at some clear examples. 
Okay, so we have praise we talked about, but you also have the problem of overpraising that is being uh, a little bit too positive with the students, not really giving any constructive feedback, or you have underpraising, which is really not telling them that they're doing anything good at all. With correction, one of the biggest problems I see is overcorrection or autocorrection, trying to fix every single little problem without any kind of structure, or worse, that there's no correction at all. Bad advice is a common problem, especially in the SLE levels where we don't tell the students really anything all month and then we just level them up, okay? And they end up in the wrong level. Or we start to think about our classes only as pass-fail, which is difficult in short courses like we have here at Pagoda. And then there is the problem of evaluation, which means not giving any evaluation whatsoever. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of what you should do and what you should definitely not do. Okay, everybody. say bath. It's bath. We say bath in America. Bath. Okay. Um, English is hard. Um, and remember your subject and verbs, okay? Okay. I was very hard at the party. Oh, um, what, what do you mean by that? My, um, hover... Okay, everyone, finish there. Great job, you were perfect. Uh, moving on, page 14. Uh, just do the first um, 10. So okay. I, I think it possible to, to be happy when you're married. No, no, me too. Sorry to stop you early, but that, that's not right at all, okay? So try better next time. Remember our important words, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at some more examples of what happens when feedback goes wrong. Oh my god, Jason, that was just amazing. It was like the most beautiful English I've ever heard. Thank you. Good month. Not only in Spain, but elsewhere in the European basis. Finished. Moving on. Teacher, me to go home? Uh, have a nice time. Me to go home? Have a nice time. Okay, enjoy 3B. I'm thanking you much, Lee. You're welcome. To be again? Uh-huh. Oh. Bye! Okay, so we've seen some examples there of things you should do and things that you should not do. The point is feedback has to be structured in some way. So let's take a look at a few conclusions, the aims that you are reaching for in all of your classes. Okay, so number one, what should feedback be? Regular and standardized. Some of you I know get into a habit of only ever doing feedback in one way, and often the way that manifests itself are simply conclusions or corrections at the end of the class, and that's all you ever do. The problem being it becomes formulaic. Standardized means you actually plan it. You think about when are you going to be giving feedback. And the best time to give feedback is all the time, after every activity. Okay, remember feedback can simply be praising a student, it can be listening to their answers, it can be giving them some tips on pronunciation. It also needs to be, number two, balanced and structured. Okay, there is no point being 100% positive, being so happy that the students are saying anything at all. Okay, because that's not helping them improve. But at the same time, you need to think about what are they doing well and what do they need help with. That is the point of structure, making sure our activities, our lesson plans are designed to help them do that, and then planning your feedback, okay, what do I need to do extra to help them? And be positive, okay? Like I said, we all remember that awful teacher, that negative teacher, the one that was only focused on getting us through the month. We didn't enjoy that lesson or that class, neither did you. Okay, and be honest with the students, okay? Whatever we remember about our teachers in the future, we want to remember how they helped us. Because feedback and evaluation is as big a part of teaching as learning. 
Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know. And 